Strings Louder. Blowing holes in my ship, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Holes in my ship. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while. Uh, new year, new motion on TV, and a brand new pellet stove. This is a Propel 130. 2200 square foot, 50,000 BTU. Recently, I just got this thing sprayed foamed. This is the shop that is at my house. It's gonna be a merch, a little merch room right here, basically merchandise and then car storage slash other stuff, but it is pretty chilly. We're here in Colorado and it gets down to negative 10 sometimes. Most of the time during the winter, it, you know, it's under 32 degrees at night for the most part. And the next day, it takes a little while for everything to warm up. I basically went back and forth on whether I was gonna do like one of those overhead things that you put in the corner where you either run propane or natural gas to it. And they cost right about a thousand dollars, but then you have to have either propane or natural gas rounding to them. Here where we're at, it's gonna take about two months to get natural gas ran out to the shop. Or if I was gonna do propane, I would have to rent a propane bottle and then pay like $2 a gallon. Uh, whereas right now, basically pellets just get bags of pellets Five i think a bag of pellets should which is about 40 pounds should last about 24 hours supposedly maybe actually a little bit longer depending on how i have it, it burning but we're not out here in the shop all the time usually it's two or three days a week shipping out merchandise i mean hopefully we got here seven days a week till that's the plan you know all hours of the night so right now what we have is the back of the shop we have this little kind of lean to thing uh not lean to what is this thing a deck it's like a deck. It's not a link. What is it called? Everybody in the comments um, is freaking out at us right now. The, the loft. loft. We got a loft right here. So we need some stairs. 1300 bucks for that thing. 240 bucks for this uh, little pellet vent thing right here. So essentially what we're doing, we got this thing up on some pavers because there is a little two by six at the bottom. We have this little guy that needs to go through the foam. We were kind of moving it back and forth right here. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and cut out this foam, get this thing to slip in there put it in the outside. And then uh, basically all we have to do once the vent is ran to the outside is actually, uh, what do we have to do, Sean? Yeah. What do we well, do? I think that's it. Yeah. Once we do that, then that's it. Ready for this? Should we just plunge it outside? Yep, exactly. It's like for an inch and a half size. No, it's about, no, it's about two, two inches. Yeah. Son of a biscuit, buddy. You did it. Yeah, go ahead. You like that? All right, so the hole is uh, is done. But basically now we're just gonna stick that thing on that and go right out, yeah? And then caulk around it. And then give it what? We're gonna caulk around it. Oh, caulk around it. Caulk? Caulk around it, yeah. Caulk it? Okay, guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. First bag of pellets. Uh, Sean is outside caulking the thing. First uh, 40 pounds. How many pounds will this hopper hold? 130. Nice beat of silicone. The outside didn't have quite that gap. Then what do we do? We just turn it on? Yep, just turn that knob. Then roll the beans, put it on turbo mode. She is dropping pellets now. Put a little fire. Oh, yep. We kind of pre uh, put a couple pellets down there in the bottom. And I want to get some better pellets. I guess these ones are kind of the, you know, they're not as good, but they were out of the good ones. So I only got three bags. I'm curious how long the three bags is going to last. All right, guys, so this thing has been burning about an hour, maybe an hour and a half or so. And it feels really nice over here. So the thing about it, it doesn't really have that big of a fan. Like it doesn't have a high volume. There's a lot of heat, like the, the air coming out of right here is really warm and then comes out the side right here just a little bit out of that little uh, little section. Comparing it to like the overhead heater that we have at the other shop right now, like the one that goes up in the corner, if we would have had one of those, this thing would have been like super warm already and probably kicked off already just because it would have been so warm. So I definitely think that this is the slower way to heat the building. It definitely works for warming up your hands when you're over here. And then especially over here underneath this little area, like this whole area feels really nice. So it's nice in here. I mean, definitely the whole shop feels a lot better just 
in general. So. so the next thing that we're actually gonna be doing is installing some uh, power. So this power was actually already in here, but the way these boxes were is they were actually mounted on the stud that was really close. So we went ahead and took down those. Now we're gonna actually mount them about four foot up. You know, eventually in, in the future, we'll probably do like a piece of OSB or a piece of plywood on here with some studs to nail it to, maybe like the first eight feet. Gonna mark it kind of for some electrical boxes and stuff, get some power back here, so that way we can get the computer and everything all, uh, you know, get it all figured out over there. So then we're gonna make a trip to the hardware store, grab some boxes, some Romex, some stuff, and go from there. So a little bit of an update. It is about 10 o'clock at night. We've been burning this thing for about seven hours or so, and uh, you can see how much of the bag we still have left. I think it kind of filled this up almost level. I don't know, I'm curious if this will last till morning. About an hour or so ago, I came out here and basically turned it on to low. This thing has a thermostat on it. There's like a little temperature probe kind of hanging out of the back. It'll turn it off once it reaches like a comfort level. It's not like 70 degrees, it's like number one, two, three, whatever. And I just have it on low and you can really feel the heat that's coming out of the, the front just really isn't that hot. And you can see how slow kind of the fire is still burning in there. It's not ripping kind of how it was earlier. And uh, you know, just the pellets are dropping at kind of a, a slower rate. It's doing okay. Uh, obviously it's like 40 some degrees outside right now. And I would say like in the shop, it's probably in the fifties, maybe 55, somewhere in there. I'm wearing just a long sleeve. When we were in here earlier, I had a hoodie on and it's just kind of hard to tell. You don't really feel it until you're essentially like in a t-shirt. So we did go to Home Depot. We got cable right there. We're gonna run a little 220 outlet over here next to the box. And then I have a decent size extension cord if we ever need to kind of cruise it around. We got these different size, these different style of boxes where they'll actually come and kind of hang out right here on the edges. Whereas the other ones were a little bit different. We spent 400 bucks at Home Depot and a bunch of stuff to wire it. It's got 250 feet of Romex. This stuff is like 150 bucks for that. It's just crazy. But yeah, kind of the goal is, you know, boxes all the way around. Uh, we're gonna do some power for the garage doors up there on the top and then get some different LED lights because you can see that one over there is burnt out. This one I think is good. This one's starting to get burnt out. That one's starting to get burnt out. That one's starting to get burnt out. So out of the six, there's only two that are completely working properly. Yeah, overall, I mean, it's definitely like right now, the way that the shop is, like if I had that thing on high with a little fan blowing on it, I would be able to pretty much work out here. You know, it is 40 some degrees. It was 50 degrees today. I would be able to work in here basically with, an, with a t-shirt or just a long sleeve pretty comfortably. I think overall it's a success. I think it did seem like it took a long time to kind of end up heating it up. So stay tuned, I guess, for a little bit more in this video where we wire up a little bit of the things in the shop. I'm not sure if we'll be able to figure out any other stuff for lights in here. The previous owner, he actually just bought those lights. I think it was in March of 2019. They have a three year warranty, so I guess it's getting getting close to that. Gonna wire some more things in here, add some 220, and uh, go from there tomorrow. See you guys then. So it's been a couple hours, and uh, Sean got everything all finished up over here at the shop. So we got two 20 amp breakers and a 50 amp breaker that we basically added in here. So you'd see we have the 50 amp breaker coming right here to this 220 plug, which is just mounted right here on the wall. You can see we have the Romex coming over here, GFCI right there, that basically protects all these other ones. So we have an outlet right there, right there. Then we have the two right here in the back. So you can see the stove is plugged into one. We'll figure we'll have the computer and everything plugged in over here with like a power strip right there. And then actually we went ahead and installed one right up here. So now there's one right there on top. So like, let's say we need to plug in like some different lights or maybe like a heater or, you know, like a vinyl cutter or a computer or something up here, uh, we'll be able to do that. On the other side of the shop, this is another thing we'll probably finish another day, but you can see got two boxes over here. And then kind of the plan is to do garage door openers up here. I don't know if they're gonna be mounted back here or up here, but probably what we'll end up doing is having the garage doors installed. Those ones are pretty much on a plug-in circuit no matter what. So we can always test them with an extension cord. And then if we, and then basically once they're wired and we know exactly what to do, then we'll run another box right here to power the garage doors. And then what we'll probably do is come down and put an outlet like right here too, just so that way, you know, if I ever have like a little air compressor, 
or something right here, need to plug in something and just work on it out there, kind of right here in the driveway, uh, that should work out pretty good as well. Other than that, you can see we got all the cars and stuff kind of, or some of the cars tucked in here. The pellet stove has basically been running on high all day. Sean's been in and out of here a little bit, but not too much. It was about 30 degrees here in Colorado today, a little bit sunny, but then right now, this morning when I came out here, it was 19 degrees outside and it was about 40 inside the shop. Um, right now, it is almost nine o'clock at night, and so the pellet stove has basically been running for about 12 hours straight on pretty much a bag. I think it, if it'll run on high for about 12 hours on one single bag, and the shop right now is about 55 degrees, and how I'm measuring that is actually just my truck. So, you know, turn on the ignition in the truck, and it has the little ambient air temperature sensor, which I believe is over here in like this mirror. Uh, which this is definitely the cooler part of the shop. There is no fan, there's no ventilation, there's nothing really moving any air around other than the tiny little fan that is in that thing. As soon as you kind of get to the back three quarters part of the shop, you can definitely just feel a little bit more warmth. Heat rises, so with the heat, I did when I was up on, there on the loft a, a minute ago, it's actually warmer up there than it is down here. So what we'll do is get two ceiling fans in here, two or three, or maybe maybe four, I don't know, something like that. And that'll just hit, help kind of circulate the air, keep the air flowing around in here. I think that is, uh, that is pretty much it for, uh, you know, kind of the little update on the shop of getting a heater and all that other stuff. Kind of the update with other shop is we were technically supposed to be moving into the new shop space, which is gonna be about 1600 square feet with an office in it. So that, that kind of takes out of that. It has one garage, it's basically the same exact blueprint, but imagine like where my truck is, is almost the office slash bathroom. And then, so this is pretty much exactly how much space we're gonna have at the other new shop other than it not having a loft. But it has a big heater, it is commercial, it's industrial, all that other stuff. And again, kind of the point is to do some stuff here, do some stuff there. Obviously not work on the cars, but mostly like car storage and merchandise and all that other stuff here. But we're kind of in a limbo mode right now. Technically we were supposed to already be moving in there. Yeah, it's already the fifth. And we have the big shop sale on the 15th. We should have been moving our stuff in there basically today. We were gonna help him take down the paint booth on the third and the fourth. But now he's kind of like waiting to hear when his other paint booth is gonna be here. Cause like if it's only gonna be a month and he, already, he, he has a lease on it. He has a month to month lease. So it's like, it doesn't make sense for him to move everything out. Uh, he was almost kind of doing us a favor of just moving the stuff out. But now it's like, he has a business to run and uh, you know, so he just, you know, he has a paint and body shop, so he needs a paint booth. Yeah, he was gonna tear it down and put it in his shop, but you know, that's if his booth is like three or four months out, but if his booth is like a month out, then like, who knows? I mean, it's, everything is up in the air at this point. And that's why we were just kind of like, well, let's go to the other shop and, you know, put the heater in it and get it kind of ready to start moving merchandise and stuff over here. So we'll probably move that over here. Depending on if we could start moving stuff into that other shop, not right away, we could probably, you know, I could, I could keep that stuff at my brother's house for like another month or so. I'm gonna call him tomorrow, uh, the other guy with the other shop that we're supposed to be moving into and see if he needs help taking down the booth or the other option would be just buying the paint booth. But if we bought the paint booth, the way that the shop is kind of set up, the paint booth is in the back corner. So you have about the, the length of a, about a small size car to put kind of halfway sideways in front of the booth, um, which honestly like a, a paint booth would make a lot of sense for me. You know, I mean, it's like how PFI Speed has a dyno, like it would make sense for me to have a paint booth. You know, I mean, I do paint and body work and I do, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. I love like rebuilding cars and wrecked cars and performance cars, you know, we want to paint the Corvette. This thing needs body work. That thing needs re some stuff painted. That thing needs, everything basically needs paint and I like painting stuff. So maybe getting the paint booth wouldn't be bad. But the thing is, is it's just, you know, it's a little bit smaller shop. So, I mean, it might be the perfect scenario is having a paint booth over there and just sending it with that. I mean, honestly, I would, I would love to have a paint booth, so. Um, I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Sorry, this whole end of it was long-winded, but that is pretty much an update. I know it's been a while since I've put a video out. I wanted to start off, you know, new year, new motion on TV, and have Charles kind of editing the videos, and we're supposed to be doing some higher production quality stuff, but he actually didn't end up feeling that good. Um, he was supposed to come down this week and, uh, and help film some stuff, but he got a little bit sick. Um, everybody, uh, pretty much everybody who, I, everybody who I know is sick. Like somebody, you know, the kids have colds and runny noses, I sound like crap, Sean sounds like crap, everything's kind of a, everything's kind of a mess. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the update. Appreciate you guys watching, staying tuned this long, and uh, stay tuned for some more shop updates. See you later.